in this lesson? Let me take you to the world of quadrilaterals. Dito sa quadrilateral, meron tayong tinatawag na special type of quadrilateral. We're in yung dalawang opposite sides niya ay parallel at ang tawag dito sa quadrilateral na to ay parallelogram. Kasama sa pamilya ni parallelogram si rhombus. Okay? Etong etong shape na to, ang tawag diyan ay rhombus dahil yung lahat ng sides ng shape na to ay congruent. On the other side, meron naman tayong tinatawag na pag lahat ng angles niya ay congruent at 90 degrees, ang tawag dyan ay rectangle. At kapag pinagsama mo yung karakteristik ng dalawang ito, makakabuo tayo ng isang shape at ito yung pinaka-special type ng paralelogram. Ang tawag dyan ay square. Ngayon, obserbahan natin yung shape ng paralelogram. Okay? I want you to observe the angles aside of this parallelogram. Look at the angles inside. Now, um, galawin muna natin yan ng konti. And all set na yan. Look at the angle A, that is 46, same yan sa angle C. Angle B, same sa angle D, congruent sila. Segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Segment AD is congruent as well to segment DC. Opposite sides are Opposite sides and angles are congruent. Okay? That is the description of parallelogram. Under ng parallelogram, meron tayong shape na rectangle. Okay? Pindutin natin yan. So, look at this one. Ayan ay rectangle. Pero bagong lahat, i-reset na natin. Ayan. I want you to look and observe for the sides and the angle of this shape. That is a rectangle. Okay. Um, look at the segment. Segment AD and segment BC. They are the same. Okay. AB and segment BC. Pares din yan. 110. And look at the angles. Okay. AB. Angle AB, C, and D are all 90 degrees. Okay. That is the angle of this shape okay puro right angle yan um now medyo galawin natin now uh, alin dyan yung nagbabago ang nagbabago lang kapag ginagalaw natin tong uh, shape na to yung si sides right yung sides pero yung angle fix siya hindi nagbabago dumako tayo dito sa isa pang shape ang tawag dito ay rhombus under pa rin ito ni parallelogram and I want you to observe the sides as well as the angle of this shape okay we have um, segment uh, AD that is congruent to segment BC segment AB 150 ay congruent kay segment BC okay um, we have angle A congruent to angle C Angle B is congruent to angle D. Now, tignan nyo mabuti yung um, sides. Yung sides natin, as you can see, hindi siya nagbabago, right? Unlike ito, si rectangle, ang hindi nagbabago dito yung yung angle. Diba? Sa rhombus, ang nagbabago yung sides. Okay? Ngayon, tignan naman natin yung isa pang shape ng paralelogram yung square now ganun pa rin observe ulit natin yung sides and yung angle nito um, as you can see lahat ng angle niya ay 90 degrees right angle lahat ng sides niya ay pare-parehas din all sides are congruent or angles are congruent as well now to wrap around sa parallelogram makakabuo tayo ng square puso na natin ng konti yan makakabuo tayo ng rectangle Tapos, kapag in-adjust na natin ng konti yan, as you can see, makakabuo tayo ng yan, medyo ano, 138 dapat yung sides. Para pare-parehas. Makakabuo tayo ng rhombus. Let us proceed. In our first task, let us identify each parallelogram as rectangle 
rhombus or square. In figure A, the figure shows that it has four congruent sides. Okay? Um, ano po observe natin? I believe that the diagonals, its diagonals intersect perpendicularly. And what else? Okay? As you can see, yung angle dyan ay hindi right angle. So, hindi na siya square, hindi na siya rectangle. Then, it's a rhombus. Okay, that is a rhombus. Now, in figure B, uh, as you can see, yung figure B natin merong apat na right angle. So, it's either rectangle or square to. But, as you can see, opposite sides are congruent. Hindi siya all sides, so remove na natin sa square. And yung two consecutive sides are not congruent. Right? Then, it is a rectangle. Rectangle. Okay? So, for our last figure, all angles are congruent 90 degrees. Yung diagonals are perpendicular. All sides are congruent. Okay? Kapag ganyan na, ang tawag sa shape na to ay square. Sa tas na to, hanapin natin ang value ng x dito sa rectangle ABCD. Okay. Pero bago ang lahat, ito yung ating given. So, we have rectangle ABCD. Okay? Um, meron din tayong uh, segment AC. <coughs> Segment AC, yung diagonal natin. Ang given na value dyan ay 9x plus 20. Yan ang expression natin. Um, sa segment B din naman, meron tayong 10x plus 8. Since na-identify na natin yung parts ng ating rectangle, um, isolve na natin yung value ng x. Huh? Ano kaya yung value ng x? Paano natin isolve to? So, madali lang. Gamitin lang natin ng mga properties na natutunan natin sa mga previous discussion natin. Okay? So, may diagonal siya. Nandun ang mga given natin. So, basically, ang gagamitin natin dito ay property number 4. So, ano ba sabi sa property number 4? So, its diagonals bisect each other. And another, ano, another characteristic niya Itong diagonal na to, si diagonal uh, AC, okay? I mean, segment AC, uh, congruent siya kanino dito sa ating segment BD, okay? Segment BD, okay? So, ayan, ayan, segment BD. Now, since meron naman ng value si segment AC, Palitan lang natin yan ng 9x plus 20. And that is equal to segment BD. Yan ay 10x plus 8. Solve na natin ang ating equation. Okay, we have... Um, we have 9x. 9x minus... Minus uh, 10x... That is equal to negative, negative 20, okay? That is negative 20 plus 8, okay? And then we have, sa left side ng other equation, we have negative x and equal, uh, that is equal to negative 12, okay? So simplify pa natin, we have x equals 12. Therefore, our x value na hinahanap dyan ay 12. Go ahead and plug in the 12 dun sa ating segment AC. Dito. Ayan, dyan. At saka sa segment BD. Dapat equal sila. Okay? Ako naman tayo dito sa next task natin. Um, we have the given EKIN. And that is a parallelogram. So, EKIN. Yan ay parallelogram according sa given natin. Um, what else? 
Since yan ay parallelogram, um, we assume that EK, EK, yan, segment EK is congruent to segment IN, or they are parallel to each other. Segment IK is parallel to segment EN from the definition of a parallelogram. They are parallel to each other. Um, we ask to prove that EKIN is a rhombus. Okay. What else? Ano pa ba yung given natin? Since yung given natin is parallelogram, one of its properties, yung opposite angle niya ay congruent. So, yung angle 4 and angle 3, pag pinag-add natin yan, so congruent siya sa angle 1 and 2. And angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. Angle 1, angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Okay? So, take note natin yan, yung property niya. What else? Ngayon, kung i-observe nyo yung ating parallelogram, nahati ito sa dalawa. Meron tayong diagonal dyan na KN, segment KN. Ito yung unang triangle. On the other hand, meron tayo dito pang isa pang triangle. Ang sabi sa property, congruent daw silang dalawa. Now, we have the two column proofs for our first statement. Okay, statement number one, we have EKIN is a parallelogram. Parallelogram. So, from the reason, ang reason natin dyan, yan ay given. So, makikita natin yan sa given. Pero, illustrate muna natin, E, K, so, E, K, I, N, that is a parallelogram from the given. Sisayin natin, from the given. Okay, statement number two, since parallelogram yan, from the definition, uh, we can say that uh, EK, segment EK, is parallel to segment IN. Sabi nga natin, from the given, parallelogram ito, no? So, itong EK na yan ay parallel dito sa segment, ah, segment IN. They are parallel to each other. So, anong pwede natin i-reason dyan? We can, say, we can use the definition of a parallelogram. Or pwede natin sabihin na ganito. Um, the opposite, the opposite, opposite sides of a parallelogram, parallelogram are parallel. Okay? Now, proceed tayo dito sa third statement natin. Ano pa bang na-observe natin sa ating parallelogram? We can say that angle, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Okay? Sige, tignan natin, illustrate natin. Itong angle na to, congruent yan sa angle 2. Okay? Saan natin nakuha yan, sir? Nakuha natin yan dito sa ating given. Okay? So, yun ang magiging reason natin dito. Uh, the reason is given. Given. Yeah. Now, let us proceed to the fourth statement. Since angle 1 and 2 ay congruent, okay, therefore, angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, and then angle 2 is congruent as well to angle 3. Hmm. Ano kaya pwede natin i-reason dyan? Ilagay muna natin dito yung AIAT. Define natin later on. Pero, illustrate muna natin yung statement number 4 natin. So, we have angle 4 and then angle 3. Sabi kung gruwin daw yan kanino, kay angle 2 at angle 1. Yan, lagyan natin ang arrow dyan. Now, from alternate alternate interior angles theorem. So, yun na ibig sabihin ng AIAT. So, alternate interior angles theorem. Now, we are done sa statement number 4. Kung nakikita nyo na yung ating illustration, mabuti. Sa number 5, as we observe, we have angle 1. Angle 1 
is congruent to angle 3. Okay? At the same time, we have angle 2 congruent as well to angle 4. Now, ano kayong reason natin dyan? Ang pwede natin sabihin reason dyan ay from the transitive property. Now, we have the next statement. So, statement number 6. Um, as we observe, we have two triangles here. So, illustrate muna natin yung dalawang triangles. We have this one, this triangle, and, and let me change the color. And sa, sa itaas, meron tayong another triangle na yan, IKN. Now, we can say that this these two triangles are congruent to each other. Get the arrow, and then get the shade. They are congruent to each other from the property number 5. Okay? Um, I think the statement is triangle EKN EKN at saka yung triangle triangle INK or isosceles triangles. Okay? Isosceles triangles. At ang reason, the definition of an isosceles triangle. In geometry, ang isosceles triangle ay mga triangle na may dalawang equal sides. Okay? Now, 7. Pwede na natin sabihin na itong mga kulay green ay legit. Okay? Kasi, ang sabi dito, si EK okay, si segment EK ay congruent na kay segment IN sorry, that is segment EN pala, segment EN kasi nga, isosilis yung number 6 natin eh ngayon, si segment IK, congruent na siya kay segment IN, so natin nakuha yan dun sa definition ng uh, dun sa reason ng ating statement number 6 so Yan ay isosceles from the isosceles triangle theorem. Okay? And it's converse. Now, um, dako tayo dito sa ating pangwalong statement. Pero bago ang lahat, illustrate muna natin yung statement number 7. Ang sabi kasi, yung EK, yung segment EK ay kung segment EN, ay yung dalawang yan. Um, yung next, yung IK, ay kung gruwan sa segment IN, ay yung dalawang yan. Yan ating statement number 7. Now, sa statement number 8, we have, we have, EK, segment EK, is kung gruwan to segment IN. And segment EN, kung gruwan as well to segment IK. Before we state the reason, let us illustrate first the statement number 8. Okay? From the statement, um, segment EK, <coughs> segment EK, this segment is congruent to segment IN. At the same time, segment EN is congruent to segment IK. Kasi nga, ang given natin is parallelogram, di ba? Opposite sides are congruent. So, if if there if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram right then then the opposite sides are congruent okay so yun ang ating reason para sa statement number 8 now as we proceed to our statement number 9 i want you to look at the segment en okay segment en Congruent siya, di ba, kay segment EK. Tapos, congruent din pala siya, kanino? Congruent din siya kay segment IN. Tapos, congruent din kay segment IK. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Lahat ng sides ng ating paralelogram ay congruent. Ito, ito. Illustrate natin. Itong mga side na to, no? itong side na to, ay congruent. Sorry, medyo. Ayan, itong side na to, ay congruent side na to, Itong side na to, congruent sa side na yan. So, 
I think yung reason natin dito is from the transitive property. So, transitive property. And, we are down sa ating last statement. We can say that EKIN So, yung EKIN EKIN is a rhombus. No? Ano kayang pwedeng reason dyan? Ang sabi kasi, uh, if a parallelogram if let's, let's state, if a parallelogram parallelogram has four has four congruent sides then ang parallelogram na to ay rhombus at tapos na tayo okay so ganun lang yung kadali mga anak no dito naman sa problem na to ano daw kaya yung value ng y para yung uh, ating rhombus na pqrs ay maging square So, una, una, identify muna natin yung ating shape. So, we have P, Q, R, S. Yan ang ay, ang sabi, yan ay rhombus from the given. And, uh, we have the segment P, S. May value yan na 31. We have the segment P, Q. May value din yan na 4X plus 3. Um, we have the angle S, uh, sorry, angle Q, S, R. Ang value is 3X plus 6Y. And to be able to solve for the value of Y, ang requirement, hahanapin muna natin yung value ng X. Okay? So, as you can see, yung X natin ay nasa sides. At the same time, nasa angle din siya. Okay. Um, dito, we have the segment PQ, segment PQ, and segment PS. From the properties, they are congruent to each other. Okay? Bakit? Kasi ang given natin na shape ay rhombus. Isa sa mga katangian ng rhombus, lahat ng sides niya ay congruent. Parehas sila ng square. Okay? So PQ is congruent to PS. So, PQ is 4X plus 3. That is equal to 31. Yung PS natin. So, 4X equals 28. Then, we have X equals 7. 28 divided by 4, that is 7. Now, we have the value of X. Um, yun na, dako na tayo sa next step natin. Ngayon, hanapin naman natin yung value ng Y. At para magawa natin yun, observe natin yung measurement angle Q as R dahil nandun yung ating Y. Pero, kailangan natin ditong mag-note muna. So, from the observation, um, we have the measurement angle PSR or yung angle S dapat kasi yan ay 90 degrees kasi nga pinuprove natin na square dapat ito. And then, angle R, 90 degrees din yan. 90 degrees din si Q and P. Dahil nga, itong shape na to dapat ay square. Ngayon, we have the 90 degrees dito. And kukunin lang natin ang kalahati ng 90 degrees. 90 degrees divided by 2, that is 45. 45, yung measurement angle ng QSR. Okay? So, yun ang lalagay natin sa ating note dito. The measurement... <coughs> Measurement angle PSR is equal to 90 divided by 2, kalahati ng right angle, that is 45. Then, we have the measurement angle QSR. At yan ay 45, kasi ito yun eh, yung kalahati lang ng 90 degrees. QSR. Ayun o, diba? Ang value ng QSR natin ay 3x. Okay, we have 3x plus 6y equals 45. Since nakuha na natin yung x value kanina, i-plug in na natin yan dito sa ating equation. So, we have 3 times 7 plus 
6y equals 45. Then we simplify. 21 plus 6y equals 45. Then we have 6y equals 24 because 45 minus 21 is 24. Then y equals 4. And that is the final answer. And then we are done. Dapat maging 4 ang y natin para maging square itong rhombus natin. I hope may natutunan ng lahat. Maraming